الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي انت الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي غالي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون Our discussion was on how to utilize the precious opportunity of the holy month of Ramadan and we talked about various issues. One of the very important issues that we talked about that in reality relates to an eschatological reality, a reality that is based on eschatology about the hereafter is that whatever we do in this world has a reaction in the higher worlds or has a reflection of a higher reality of the same thing in the higher worlds or in the higher realms of existence. We talked about this reality at length and I don't want to repeat uh, this concept. However, it's very important for us to understand that if a person keeps this in mind, he would refrain from doing anything which is unpleasant, which is sinful, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like. Because he knows that when he does that thing, it is not something that is uh, the retribution, is not something that is separate from the action itself. Notice that, you see, there are about two or three opinions on the reality of the action and retribution. One of these opinions says that whenever a person does a deed, the retribution or the recompense that is known as the jaza is separate from the deed itself. That means if he does something today, then on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give a retribution, can punish him or cannot punish him. It is uh, volitional, it is up to him. You see, because the amal and the jaza, that is the action and the retribution is separate from each other. This is one opinion. And therefore, you know, if a person uh, is sinful, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can separate him from hellfire on the day of judgment according to his volition because he has decided to do otherwise, for example. Another opinion says that the action and the retribution are causally linked to one another. However, the retribution proceeds after a certain duration of the life of the person. That means, or for example, in clearer terms, when a person has finished his lifetime, then the time of retribution comes along. It's as if a person sows the seeds of corn, for example. Thereafter, after a certain duration, he reaps corn after the duration has already passed. Now, doesn't mean that there is no causal link between the sowing of the seeds and the reaping of the corns. No, there is that causal link. But you see the uh, mahsul and what is gotten, that is the corn, comes after a certain duration. It's not at the same time. When you sow the seeds, at that time you get corn. But there is a causal link. So they say that the, similarly, our actions, we do, for example, we commit sins or we commit good, and after a certain duration, we see the result of our deeds in the form of hellfire or heaven and so on. This is another opinion. Then there is the third of opinion which the great authoritative scholars agree, uh, like Mullah Sadra and others. And even, not only is it a mere opinion of their intellectual uh, cognition. Rather, they draw this reality from the Holy Quran. 
from the verse that says وَمَا تُجِزَوْنَ إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ You will not get except what you did. Not for what you did. Some of the translators, when they want to translate this phrase of the words, that وَمَا تُجْزَوْنَ And you will not get the retribution. إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Except what you have done yourself. مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ They say, except for what you have done. This is a wrong translation. The right translation, correct translation is وَمَا تُجْزَوْنَ إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ You will not get the retribution except what you did. That is your retribution. That means the amal and the action and the retribution is the same thing. But the retribution in reality is, is a reflection of the action done. Is a higher representation of the action in the higher worlds or in the higher realms of existence. And this is the opinion that is accepted by great scholars of Islam. That you know, whatever you do, you have a reflection of the same in the higher realities of existence. And it's not something separate. You can't say that this thing can be separated from a person. Yes, there are methods of separating oneself from hellfire. And that is through uh, seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Changing your way of life. And for example, struggling to, do, to go and to uh, adopt the right path. All these things are keys to release yourself from hellfire. Another very important key is that supplication that we say, خَلِّسْنَا مِنَ النَّارِ يَا رب. Now that means that we are in hellfire and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can release us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the same. So this third opinion is what we uh, understand from the Holy Quran. There are many traditions that even allude to this reality. And not only that, but great authoritative scholars also adopt this opinion that whatever you do is the result of your deed. It's not something like, you know, the uh, worldly kind of encounter that, for example, in a certain country, if a person violates a certain law, then there is a retribution waiting and that is for example imprisonment so here you find that the action which is violating the law is separate from the imprisonment and it can be separated from each other you find that some uh, people who are affiliated to a certain government get rid of the punishment just by for example uh, paying lots of money or for example because they have somebody whom they know in the government and therefore they are released they are not they don't go to the prison that's why we say that you know the action and the retribution is separate but with regard to uh, the reality of our actions in this world it is not like that whatever we do is the reaction itself so in order to get rid of that we need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to release us from hellfire now a very important thing in the holy month of Ramadan that we should now realize that you know because uh, you know after one month approximately or less than a month rather the holy month of Ramadan is coming about uh, we must realize that there is one fundamental thing that we should bear in mind while we enter the holy month of Ramadan. And this can be gotten from that very beautiful khutbah and sermon of the holy prophet in the holy month of Sha'ban, known as khutbah Sha'baniya, the last Friday of the month of Sha'ban, when the holy prophet says that the most wretched person in this holy month, al-shaqi, man haruma ghufranullah, the most wretched Ashaqi is a person who is deprived of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore we should try and struggle that from the first night, not also from the first day, but from the first night, when we see the moon of the holy month of Ramadan, we should start our istighfar and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we are not from those who have been deprived from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not termed as those who will be deprived from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, specifically when we have a very powerful night like Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, which is greater than a thousand months. That means 
that the opportunity is vast for us. If we value this opportunity in this holy month of Ramadan, we can get a lot from it. Therefore, it's very important for us to realize that this month is Shahru Tamhis, as Imam Zayn al Abidin alayhi salam beautifully puts it in that dua, in that supplication which he uh, prays when the holy month of Ramadan. He, when he's welcoming the holy month of Ramadan, he says, for example, he says it's Shahru Siyam, Shahru Islam, Shahru Tahur, Shahru Tamhis. All these names that it is, um, for example, the month of um, fasting, the month of submission, the month of purification, the month of test and trial, the month of waking up at night for the sake of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are actually the guidelines that Imam As-Sajjad alayhi salam is giving us and telling us, you know, actually this month is for these things. If you have the holy month of Ramadan at your disposal, then must you must be careful how to utilize it. The opportunity is only one month. And these are the things that you should be doing in this holy month of Ramadan. So one of the things is Shahru Tahur purification of yourself try to think about those things sins those major sins and minor sins that you have committed try to have a firm resolution that oh allah i will not repeat these sins oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is an opportunity that you have given us we don't know whether we can get this opportunity again so please let us utilize this opportunity in the right path so it is very important for us to understand uh, this factor. Another very important thing that Imam Ali alayhi salam mentions and obviously he asks a question to the Holy Prophet in the same khutbah Sha'baniya and I suggest that the viewers should read this khutbah. It's a very lengthy khutbah but full of meaning. Again, it is a guideline for us to understand what to do in this holy month of Ramadan. Is it only fasting? Is it only reading the Quran, vocalization of the holy Quran? Or is it the process of epitomization? You find that Imam Zain al-Abidin salam while bidding farewell to the holy month of Ramadan says, As-salamu alayka ya Eida awliya'ihi. Eida awliya'ihi means that you are the Eid, that is the holy month of Ramadan is Eid for the one who is near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means this, what does Eid mean? Eid comes from the word Aud, and Aud is to return. So literally, a person who returns to Allah and returns to his proximity is known as the person who is in Eid. So this month is the Eid of the, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person doesn't return to Allah, if a person is stagnant, a person says, Alhamdulillah, I prayed at night, I recited the Quran, I, for example, uh, fasted every day, and I uh, what woke up for sahri time, and so on, and Alhamdulillah, the holy month of Ramadan went well then he is a stagnant personality. What we should do is we should make ourselves dynamic. We should change. If we had stagnant thoughts before the holy month of Ramadan, after the holy month of Ramadan, we should have dynamic thoughts. If we, for example, were those people who did not perform our devotions well in the holy, before the holy month of Ramadan, that means that we, uh, our devotions were, were a mere vocalization and a practice of the movements of the limbs, then we should make a resolution that after the holy month of Ramadan, we should do all these devotions, but out of full meaning and all that. So it is very important for us to understand ourselves, to analyze ourselves before the holy month of Ramadan, during the holy month of Ramadan and after. Now, what does the holy prophet say to Imam Ali alayhi salam? While the prophet is giving the khutbah, a time comes when Imam Ali alayhi salam says, فَقُمْتُ I stood up. وَقُلْتُ And I said, مَا أَفْضَلُ الْأَعْمَالِ فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ Ya Rasulullah, which is the best of actions in this holy month of Ramadan. And the Holy Prophet says, أَفْضَلُ الْأَعْمَالِ فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ الْوَرَعَ أَنْ مَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ The best thing to do in this month is to refrain from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. And if you look at that verse that we mentioned in the beginning, that, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, 
which is there in Surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. O you who believe. Kutiba alaykum as-siyam. Fasting has been prescribed for you. And mind you we said. Kutiba alaykum as-siyam. Not sawm. That means that Allah anticipates that state that can be gotten from fasting. That spiritual state. Kutiba alaykum as-siyam. Kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum. The way it was written for those before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you observe <coughs> piety. Now from here you come to know that what is the reality of piety? god worriness self-protection from sin. The word taqwa means protecting oneself from sin. Being observant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over you. And that's the same thing that Imam Ali alayhi salam was told by the Holy Prophet that al warah an maharim Allah. And that is taqwa. So the fasting should make us muttaqeen. If it makes us muttaqeen, that we, then we really are fasting. If it does not make us muttaqeen, then we are not fasting in reality. Therefore, this is something very important to be considered in this holy month of Ramadan. So these are deeds which we should think over. One of the very important things that we should realize in the holy month of Ramadan is the fact that our salat and our prayer is really a point of ascent for us. It should make us ascend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to one dictum narrated that as salatu mi'rajul mu'min if you look at the authorities of mysticism and irfan, like Imam Khomeini, we find that the three important and fundamental states of Salat, which are Qiyam, Ruku and Sujood, have important connotations to reveal. For example, the state of Qiyam reveals that state that every action that anybody does is by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. This reality, we understand conceptually, but we should understand presentially. We should look at this, we should vision this with our hearts, that everything that we do, every moment that transpires in us is بإذن الله, with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. And when we go to Ruku', the reality that should come in our minds and hearts is that every good characteristic that anybody has belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is also there in the Holy Quran. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Now, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى If you look at this phrase, you find the predicate coming before the subject. In Arabic, when the predicate comes first and then the subject, it connotes specification. That means only for Allah are the beautiful names. And therefore, if you have any kind of knowledge, if you have any kind of power, when you go to Ruku and you really are doing the proper Ruku, you will vision the fact that anything anybody has, any kind of good attribute, perfect attribute, solely belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when you go to sajda, is now you, remo you come to the climax. Now you see that there is no essence save Allah's essence. And that is what we should try to literally behold. That whatever exists is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions. خَلَقَكُمْ وَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, He created you and what you do. Obviously, there is a very important concept that we should realize. And that is that it is not Allah who is making and forcing us to do these things. No, Allah has given us a volition. Whenever we want something, He assists us to do that. Whether it is good or bad, if He would not do that, then what would transpire? If he would not do that, you know what would transpire? It would be such that a person is forcefully doing everything. Or, for example, a person who does this thing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not help 
him do anything. That means that uh, he has a separate volition. And therefore, it is very important to realize that this thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a volition. But this volition is by his power. والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين انت الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي انت الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي غالي السجاد حبك غالي غالي يا ابو السجاد حبك غالي العشق قالوا ما